Talkers, welcome back. My name is Catherine and today we're talking about investing. Decisions regarding investing should only be made after careful research. So don't just invest in something because I said it. One of the first things you hear about when you start to get into investing and financials and all of that good stuff is something called a 401k. A 401k or a traditional 401k is a retirement savings plan sponsored by your employer. As an employee, it allows you to save and invest a portion of your paycheck before taxes are taken out. So let's say you are a software developer and here I've found what the median software developer salary is in 2017-ish, but it's about $100,000. So let's say you made $100,000 in the last year. If you decide to put 15% of your paycheck into a 401k, that means instead of being taxed for $100,000, you'll only be taxed for $85,000. That $15,000, that 15% that you decided to put into a 401k in savings is a deduction and so you're not taxed on that. Instead, it grows tax-free in this 401k plan, and the return on that can be pretty significant later on in life. This is assuming you don't have income from any other sources, that you made that flat fee of $100,000, you invested 15% of it through the 401k retirement plan, you'll only be taxed for $85,000, which is great. So what is made up of this 401k? It's not just this blank slate that you give money to and it grows, what actually is it? While there are other plans for your 401k, the most popular seem to be target date funds, which are a combination of stocks and bonds that get gradually more conservative as you reach retirement. So in this case, retirement is that 65 year old age. For each year money sits in your 401k, it grows on average between five and 7%. Sometimes it'll be less than that, sometimes it'll be more, but that's about the average. Over time, your money will grow, and while five to 7% doesn't seem like much, we'll see how much it can grow in a minute. So you have $15,000 sitting in this account for the one year that you've invested, say, this year. You've never contributed to your 401k before. Now you've contributed this last year, and $15,000 is what you've gotten there. What else is there? Sure, it's going to continue to grow, but are there other things? Yes. There's this thing called employee matching, and this is the really interesting portion because it's essentially free money. With employee matching, an employer will match what you contribute to your 401k to a certain percentage. So your employer might match 3%, so 3% of your $100,000 salary, which ends up being $3,000. If you put in $15,000, and so 15% of your $100,000 salary into the 401k, your employer for free will put $3,000 into that 401k as well. So now you have $18,000 into that 401k. You got $3,000 just for doing the contribution to your 401k, just for investing your amount, so investing at least $3,000, you get the employer to put in $3,000 for free. Now let's say you only put 2% of your salary into this 401k, so you put in $2,000 of your $100,000 salary. You would get taxed still for $98,000, but your employer would still contribute, in this case, only $2,000 because they're matching what you put in. They'll match you up to 3% of your salary, so $3,000, and then there's no more employee matching, you've used up your match, you've used up that 3% of your salary, and you can continue to contribute to this 401k. Of course, you don't get access to your employer's contributions right away. There's this thing called vesting. Vesting is the amount of time you have to work at a company in order to gain access to these contributions and to get them deposited fully into your 401k. It's like an insurance policy, so you don't leave the company early. Your payments, on the other hand, vest immediately. If you leave early, you don't get your employer's contributions. Usually this vesting period is around three to five years, and so as long, and it depends on the company, as long as you stay at the company for a certain portion of time, and this will be listed in the benefits and the contract and stuff, you will get access to all of the contributions. So I googled around and I found out that AOL.com still exists, but this is a little outdated, it's in 2016, but here you see the company, so Google matches 100% of an employee's contributions up to $3,000. Apple is 6% match of the eligible employee's pay, so in this case it would be $6,000 if you made $100,000 a year with Apple. Microsoft is a little bit different and they'll match 50% until you reach $9,250 per year. And what this basically means is Microsoft will match you until you give your maximum contribution. And so in 2018 it was 
18,500, but this year it's 19,000, so I imagine they upped them ante. In this case, the 401k plan is a little bit better here because you're getting $9,250 versus $3,000 with Google and $6,000 with Apple, considering if your salary is $100,000 a year. If it's more, it could be more, like the 6%, there's a point where that might reach higher than 9250 or whatever Microsoft is contributing. It all depends on what you're making. The vesting schedule is not really published here. Here it has a different number for Google. It says 50% matching, so it's 50 cents for every dollar you contribute up to $8,250. Apple is 100% matching up to 6% of your salary, so that was the same as we had if you work there long enough. So that means it could be you wouldn't get access to Apple's complete contribution until maybe five, six years working at the company. Adobe, 50% up to 3% of your salary. So for 50 cents for every dollar you contribute and then up to 3%, so $3,000 of your salary. And then we have Dropbox with 100% matching up to $3,000 as well. There's also this website called Brightscope. I did look at them, but they don't have the exact details of everyone's 401k plan, they just rank them. In this case, Google has the best score out of all of them, but that's another website you can look at if you're trying to compare 401k plans on a basis level. And they basically rate theirs on how generous the company contributions are and all of these other criteria. There's also the Netflix plan. And what I love, you know, I love Netflix. Netflix is so transparent about every single part of their benefits. And they were really easy to find because it's just posted on their website. But for them, they do immediate vesting. And so this means you get access to the company's 401k contributions immediately. So they are vested. That doesn't necessarily you take the money out, but they're invested immediately. And here we go, Netflix matches up to 4% of your eligible earnings, but they are vested immediately. And so you do not have to wait until a certain period in order to get access to your contributions. Now, Amazon, another big company here, uh, they rank dead last. Um, a new worker earning $80,000 would be eligible for a maximum company match of just $1,600. And so if we do some math here, if we go, $1,600 divided by 80000 So that's about 2% of the person's salary. There's also Facebook. Here they match 50 cents on the dollar up to 7%. Now, these are a lot of percentages and numbers, and we can't really do all of the calculations in our heads. If you want me to make another video where I take a given salary number and I show you which 401k plan is the best for you or which company does the best matching for you, let me know if you want to see that in the comments. Also, if you're in startup land and the startup goes out of business, but they offered a 401k plan through the employer, this traditional 401k plan, your money's safe, it won't go away, so don't worry about that. Now, you may be wondering why put money into this 401k. Yes, it's investing. It's a really easy way to invest. You can get free money from the tech companies because they do employee match, and so you can get essentially 3% put into your 401k automatically. But what, what is the return? Well, I wrote a program over here, and this program is written in JavaScript. It's like a little, I'm running it with Node.js. And here's our little program. And what we do is we calculate the retirement earnings. And so we said it was between 5 and 7%. That's our rate of return. But we, we keep that as a parameter. So here we have this function. We say calculate retirement earnings. We give it a current amount. So this is the amount that we're starting with in the 401k. Our age. And in this case, in the function, we subtract it from 65. And then how much are you going to contribute each year? And then what that rate of return is. And so that would be your 5-7%. In this function, we're basically calculating how much are you going to have at the end of retirement. We have this total variable, we have a number of years to retirement, and really what we're showing here, basically saying, okay, each year I want to add my additional amount, and then I also want to see what my rate of return is on that current amount that was in there, and as well as what I'm contributing. And then you'll return the total. So this is basically going to show us what would happen if you put in a certain amount of money at a certain age, if this was your rate of return, all that good stuff. And so most people, to be conservative, will do a 5%. They're going to assume it's going to be a 5% return. And in this, we'll kind of switch these around, but in this case, for our first one, if you put in $1 at 18 years old, and that's when you can begin to contribute 
this 401k, if you put $1 in and you had a 5% return on that $1, so every year that $1 grows 5%, how much would that dollar be at 65? So we are going to save this and then we will run it. At 65, your $1 at 18 years old is really worth almost $10. So if you put $10 into that account, it would be worth almost $100. That's insane. Now, let's say you decided to max out your 401k, or almost maxed out. So you put $18,000 when you're 18, you get a 5% rate of return. That $18,000 now becomes $178,000 and I'll make this a little bit bigger so you can see it, but basically becomes almost $180,000 just by putting it aside in the 401k and living on a little bit less. Now, is an 18 year old really gonna make this much money? Probably not, but if they put in just $500 at 18, that becomes $5,000. Isn't that insane? Now let's say you're a little older and now you're 23 and you're a software developer, so you're making the bank and you contribute say you're this 23 year old software developer that's making hundred thousand dollars a year which is not uncommon at these big tech companies and you contribute fifteen thousand dollars of your salary to the 401k and in this case you will avoid taxing on this stuff. you only get taxed for eighty five thousand dollars let's say and then you don't invest ever again you only put fifteen thousand dollars when you're 23 and then you never touch this fund again you will get hundred and sixteen thousand dollars in that account now you will when you withdraw this you will be taxed on this but it grew tax-free it's just growing and growing and growing and making all this profit and you just put in fifteen thousand dollars fifteen percent of your salary at 23 now let's say you continue to contribute let's say you continue to contribute fifteen thousand dollars of that salary then this is how much you get. So you get $2 million, so I'm breaking it out there, but you get $2,246,000 essentially, just by putting 15,000 away and it growing at a rate of 5% every year. And 5% is really conservative. So let me comment these out and let me show you what it means to be at a 7%. So if it's a 7%, meaning it's really good for you, you actually get almost $4 million. That's insane. This is why it is important to contribute to the 401k. And let's say you get 18,000 because you decided to stay with your employer and your employer continues to match you. And we save this. And we have that seven. So say it was still that seven rate return. You get almost $600,000 more because of that employee match. So if you're not doing the employee match, you're throwing away essentially $600,000 by the time you reach retirement. Now, of course, that changes. Like, let's say you did exactly the employee match. So say it was 3,000 that they match. You put in 3,000. You're still walking away with, what is this? A million dollars, $1.5 million. That's still pretty good. So you want it, and it's because of the free cash that you get with the employee matching. And it's free cash that's put into your 401k after you've been at the company for a certain amount of time, depending on the vesting. But let's say you only did 3,000 in the 401k and you didn't have the employee match, or you did, in this case, we'll say 4,000, so you didn't complete the employee match, you only put 2,000 of your own money into the account, they contributed also 2,000. This means you're leaving, let's see, about $500,000 on the table. That could have been yours for free. This is why it's so important to do the employee match. If you want this code, I'm gonna put it on the internet, on GitHub, and I'll link it below. If you feel like you can write a better algorithm than I can, or you see errors in the algorithm, let me know. Another assumption I'm making is that you're not putting in all the money on December 31st of the one year, that you're putting it in continuously throughout the year, and that is included in that rate of return. So when I do this total plus additional amount each year, multiplied by the rate of return, I'm including that in that contribution. I could take that out, assuming you put it in at the end of the year, and then it's counted in the next year, multiplied by that rate of return, but this is an estimate. Now, of course, there are complex rules about when you can withdraw your money. It's meant to be a retirement fund, so you're meant to put the money in there, keep it in there, and not touch it till you're 65 years old. You can withdraw it before that age, but there are expensive penalties that essentially make it not worth the while to put the money in the 401k and to just, you'd rather keep it in a savings account that's growing at 2% a year. 
So you want to put your money in there, don't touch it till you're 65, and enjoy the tax break in the meantime. So how much money should you put into this traditional 401k? At the very least, you'll want to invest enough to get that full match from your employer, from your company. You don't want to leave free money on the table. Ideally, you're investing at least 15%. There might be times when you want to invest less, but it's better to put the money in in your 20s than your 40s because of compound interest. And so your money keeps growing and growing with that 5 to 7% return. It would be better to max out your 401k all through your 20s and never contribute again than to wait till you're 35 to start contributing. So I did the math here, and if you put in the maximum amount to your 401k from the time you're 20 to 30, you would end up with this amount in the 401k, and then if you never contributed to it anymore and it grew at a rate of 7%, you would get 3 million in that 401k. Now, let's say you waited until you were 35 to start contributing. You end up with about half as much money, assuming you start maxing it at that given point. This is one of the easiest ways to get started investing, and it's relatively hands-off in that your company probably hires someone like Fidelity to manage most of it, and you just choose your contribution, whether it's 15% or 10%, and leave it alone. You don't have to touch it again. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Katherine, and this is not what I usually do, but let me know if you like it in the comments. Happy coding!